Let's go. Yep. Ready? I'm ready. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Badminton Experience. Um, welcome back. It's been a it's been a few weeks. Last time we sat here, we had uh, Stein Pillarsen with us. Um, now it's uh, just me and you again. Yeah, it was a great episode with Stein. If you haven't watched it yet, you should. But yeah, it's uh, good to be back, just the two of us uh, in this setting. And uh, we are quite excited about today, but also excited about leaving for the World Championships. Yeah, definitely. This was uh, actually our last uh, training session. Um, it is Wednesday, the 17th of August, um, mm. and we'll leave uh, for Tokyo, the World Championships, tomorrow. I will fly Finnair. Yeah, I'm uh, with <laughs> the, the only one. Yeah, I'm with Austrian Airlines. It's actually the first time ever, I think, that the Danish team is not traveling together. It, it's usually a rule that you have to travel for the championships, like World Championships, Europeans, Olympics. You have to travel as a team mm -hmm. on the same flight and everything. But with the flight tickets, like the prices are insane at the moment. So the Federation uh, was struggling to find a, uh, a good price. So they, uh, they gave us a bit of money and then we could uh, book everything on our own. So people are flying on all different... Uh, different kinds of uh, routes i just wanted time for myself so that was why yeah. I'm, I'm the only one uh um flying finnair yeah. first of all can we just address uh the shirt that you're wearing today it's nice right strawberries strawberries it's actually a uh, a fan present from uh, indonesia i got Oof. it like maybe 10 years ago it's really like a, an old one um i haven't been using it a lot but i used it uh, last week for a uh, like a meeting uh, like a network meeting and uh, actually i just felt quite good and comfortable wearing it so i thought yeah why not the weather here is nice and uh, it's i feel like it's a summer shirt it so, is, is yeah. indeed it's, it's almost too warm today i would say but uh yeah, true. It, it's cool yeah. i was once told um when you go on television you shouldn't wear something like with stripes and with mm. patterns and stuff just try to keep it simple i don't know if it's annoying the the <laughs> camera or I but uh, keep that in mind we'll figure it out let us it, know guys it might be the only time i wear it but <laughs> then you know the explanation why speaking of your clothes uh, and actually also one of the questions that we had about our parking tickets oh yeah because yeah. um first of all some of you guys might saw the instagram story that we did uh, a few days ago where both of us uh, got a parking ticket. We yeah. were at a meeting, and uh, unfortunately, uh, it was a an expensive one. Um, it was, it was. <laughs> but a lot of a lot of, uh, of 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 the guys were commenting about your shirt. Do you yeah. do you oh, remember yeah. the That's shirt? Right. That, that, that was wearing? actually another fan gift from yeah. Indonesia. Uh, we get so many. Uh, that was uh, a brand called. Erico, I think. Yeah, something uh, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got that one on uh, when I went to Bali and when we went to Bali last year for the badminton festival. Um, yeah, and uh, it's just another comfortable mm. one. Uh, it's not always uh, gifts that are very useful we get, but uh, yeah, I've been uh, quite lucky a few times. Um, so that is actually one of my favorite shirts uh, yeah. this summer to wear. I didn't even notice it was a uh, it was a shirt from Indonesia, but yeah. I just saw the the, the fans went uh, quite crazy in the Instagram story. Yeah, it also doesn't really give away that it's an Indonesian shirt. I think you have to know. To, yeah, uh, to if see you know, it. you know. Yeah, exactly. So uh, when we spoke, not last time, but the episode before that, uh, we were only a few days into the World Championships uh, preparation um, of the World Championships training camp, and you were bollocked, if you can say that. You were, you were quite tired, and it was yeah. only a few days in. Yeah. So the question is, we have finished our last session. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel much better now. I feel... Like I, I'm actually still a bit tired, but I'm just <laughs> I'm I'm not tired in the same way. I'm not like exhausted. Before I was just exhausted and I, I didn't have energy to do anything. Now I'm just uh, basically just tired of being here, being home because I just want to get going. I feel like we've been here for so long. We prepared well. We did all the hard work, uh, and I'm I'm just ready to go. Uh, so I f I felt like that this entire week. So uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that it was just about killing time uh, and getting ready for that flight uh, tomorrow don't you um, don't you always don't you also always feel like these last couple mm. of days is so stressful yeah I, d I do for sure I need to get everything solved with the uh, yeah all the logistics and practical stuff at home and uh, you need to feel also that you are playing well so if you have one training session where it maybe not working perfectly well then you can get a bit stressed about that but I think like this is the ninth time I'm playing the World Championships and it's the same every single time like the last few days before you leave mm. this like y you can't be calm you just you're just eager to go and you're a little nervous or uh, like tight or yeah it's just 
it, it's the same feeling every single time at least in my experience i mean i feel like that every time i'm i'm going to 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 tournaments uh mm. going out traveling just all the practical stuff and especially in these days with corona there's so so much stuff we need to do uh, with uh Corona tests yeah. and um, certificates and and different apps that we need to fill out and there there's so much on top of that you need to you pack all your stuff mm. you don't want to leave your apartment in in my case uh, looking like a mess yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, on top of that you need to like finish well in training mm. training twice a day so it's it's just extremely stressful the last couple of days mm. I always feel like once you once you board the plane mm. and the the plane takes off it's like you can finally relax. I I, 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 I made it once again. Yeah, I did yeah. it, and and then you like kind of like leave all the stress from home. Yeah. At home, yeah. Um, that that's such a good feeling. It's completely the same for me, and I'm actually I've developed this uh, really cool skill of being able to, uh, like, as soon as we get into the air, I can just sleep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, like if you go f- five, six, seven years back, I was not a, a great sleeper on planes, but. I think especially since I uh, I had a uh, yeah since I had Vincent it's it's been like that I can finally relax when mm. I'm on the plane I know there's nothing left for me to do and I can just yeah I can uh, fall asleep straight away It's it's sometimes a disadvantage because sometimes you you actually don't want to fall asleep mm. immediately yeah, you need to yeah. like time it with the with the time difference yeah. of the place where yeah. you are going yeah. um but I always fall asleep yeah. immediately yeah. it's yeah. uh and then I can't. But you're also on business later. class, so it's a lot easier <laughs> out there. I'm always on the economy class, so almost always. But so. but when we are boarding, I'm yeah. I'm sitting up. Uh, I'm, I'm not true. laying down. Yeah. Um, and that's that's where I fall asleep. Yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not really good at sleeping on 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 planes. Okay. I just I I actually don't really like turbulence. Yeah. Um, and I think I feel like I'm, yeah. It wakes me up every single time. It's okay. very annoying. Oh. I need to work on that. I'm, you do, uh, you do. I just heard a podcast uh, the last few days about uh, sleep. Okay. So uh, why we sleep? Yeah. Some some professor. Uh, I actually have a book called Why We Sleep. Okay. And uh, I haven't read a single page. No, no. I guess um, the author of that book is yeah. is the guy talking in, okay. in the podcast. It was oh. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of different things you can do to yeah. optimize your sleep, and uh, that that's a ho- a, a, a whole other topic that, and that yeah, that's is, not what we are actually one of my about. go-to things if if i can't sleep on a plane like if there's uh, one odd uh odd day where that's not possible for me i actually always put a podcast on mm. then i will fall asleep even though i love listening to podcasts but if i'm just sitting in a plane and there's nothing else i have to do like usually when i listen to podcasts it's in the car while i'm driving or if i'm doing the dishes or uh, cooking but if i just need to if i can just only sit down and just listen mm. then i always fall asleep yeah i have a, a fun fact and uh this is not too uh you shouldn't I take already, this as I a already, disrespect or anything i already know what you're going to you say. have your own podcast uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Reading, who's, it's only audio and yeah. i have actually used it to fall mm. asleep at times it's just your your vo- it's like your voice is different in in your own podcast compared mm. to here mm. it's just like very l- relaxed relaxing yeah. yeah it's uh, but as long as you press play it's fine for me because yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. it's uh yeah <laughs> it counts it all counts yeah so um so you're feeling good you're feeling ready i am i am indeed what about you with your injury the, i think the last time we really gave guys an update you were still not quite uh back into just training f- fully right just in the beginning of my kind of uh come back um so and we have a bunch of bunch of questions about my my current Mm. state obviously um you're not planning to go to asia again just to be a spectator hopefully i don't know yet but uh (laughs) but that's definitely not the plan i'm i feel i feel fine um obviously it's not been the ideal um training camp for me uh, Mm. since i've only had like five weeks to 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 practice and before that i had like eight weeks uh being Mm. injured so it's it's definitely not been ideal um but i am first of all i'm injury free mm. and that's uh, very good i feel uh, i feel i'm i'm very happy with that um mm. not having to worry that much about my injury so i'm injury free i'm able to to practice and uh, give it 100% um i haven't had that many experiences of reaching my highest level mm. during training i haven't been playing that much ma- much match um as i usually mm. would um, so it's definitely been different. I haven't been on the same schedule as you and uh, mm. Rasmus Gemge and Victor Axelsen. Mm. Um, so 
it's been a different mm. uh, training camp, but I'm happy to say that it, it looks like I'm going to to Japan tomorrow, <laughs> injury free, yeah. ready to play, excited to to get back on court, and um, I think I have lowered my expectations a little bit just to my everyday training um, and and also my expectations for the upcoming championships um, mm. and I think that's been quite good for me mm. uh, I've been a bit more relaxed I was getting really really stressed um, during my my injury and mm. stuff um, so I think it was a good move for me to, to kind of relax a little bit mm. um, I feel like my my answer to all of the um, how do you say the uh, Mulgang Uh, hard times, hardships. Yeah. yeah. My answer to, to to all these hard times, injuries and stuff has been like, okay, then I'm going to optimize even more in my everyday life mm. when it comes to my food, sleep, training, um, just everything. Yeah. Um, and it was getting like maybe a little bit unhealthy um, mm. at times, uh, especially when dealing with uh, an injury and everything's just mm. very, very frustrating. Yeah. Um, So because you you're never really kind of relaxed in it because you were no. always trying to optimize other yeah. things and yeah right. exactly it makes so sense makes sense I th- I think that has been a quite good move for me so yeah. now I don't have very high expectations for 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 these championships with that mm. being said mm. uh, I'm going to give my absolute everything yeah. and I still believe in myself I w- always mm. will mm. Um, and in the longer run mm. my my goals and my confidence and stuff will mm. will will get back to normal mm. um but right now i'm just happy to being able to play mm. and uh, and i'm really hoping that i'm going to step on court i mean i don't want to jinx yeah. it because yeah. last yeah. time i yeah. got an injury yeah. at my first training session out in asia so yeah. by the time i step on court i'm like yeah. finally yeah. Uh, i'm i'm here so yeah. i'm really looking forward to, to you're that. gonna get a like a pretty tough start right like compared uh, considering it's the world championships where there are a lot of said with all respect softer opponents compared to like a normal normal uh, super 1000 or super 750 event you've had a pretty tough first round roll with the nishimoto mm-hmm. and do you think that's an advantage or would you have preferred to have like a like a softer start to get back into the uh, the match with them because i think sometimes it can also work a little bit as an advantage that you actually get out there and you have to play at like the normal high level speed uh, mm-hmm. straight away to to get into that rhythm um i don't really know 100 i think i would have preferred uh an easier mm. uh first round opponent um it's going to be a very tough one definitely uh kenta nishimoto is a strong strong opponent mm. plays very well and we have had some great matches in the past um i think our head-to-head stats i'm up like four one or five mm. one so mm. but but all of the matches almost has always been like very very close games uh good games so the one you lost was that french home one year it was in french home yeah, yeah. i wa- uh the first time i played him was in i think this was 2017 mm. played him in denmark goldman one and then i lost in uh in french open the week after oh, the semi-final yeah. and then you played him again in china open i played him again in china yeah, open yeah. and it was like something something happened there mentally i think since that match i always had kind of like an edge when mm. i played against him uh we've played many close matches but i have managed to for for the last uh, three or four encounters to mm. to pull out as the winner yeah um so it's um it's going to be tough definitely but um then again i'm just looking forward to get on court mm. um yeah. get some get some time on on the green maps mm. once again Yeah, and uh, yeah, that'll be good. Speaking of tough first round draws, mm. you have a Lakshya Sen. Yeah, my head to head is a three three one for me. It so is. Yeah, so it's a good draw. Wow. Yeah, no, I I lost to him. What is that? Like one and a half months ago at the Indonesia Masters. Um, but before that, yeah, I had beaten him in the Danish league and in the uh, Malaysia Masters. Do you uh, count that in in your head to head? Yeah, stats? in my three to one, three one. But it anyway, count. international. Sorry to say, it doesn't count in international competition. Then it's two two one. Uh, I've beaten him in Malaysia, and uh, now I am actually uh, Denmark. I was about to forget that one. Um, but obviously, I played him when he was a bit younger uh, than he is now. Um, no doubt, it's a very tough draw. But it, he I just won the Commonwealth. He games. just won the Commonwealth Games. Obviously, made the final of All England this year. And I, I think, if you look at the results just for this year, I think he's probably top three in the world. Uh, if you look at the points mm-hmm. around that top four, at least. Yeah, it uh, could be. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but actually, when I saw that draw, even though <laughs> it's a tough one and I could have had one of the softer ones, I did not feel that <laughs> bad because he's... Uh, why is that fun? <laughs> I I, just, <laughs> I remember you said the same when you were going to play against the Momota in All England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's but like it's it's actually kind of the same argument that that it's it's one of the seeded players that I I actually like playing against. Like if I had to play a guy like yeah, Victor or Lishi Jia, who is also a type of player I do not really like playing against, I would not feel too great about it. Um, but Lakshya at least in my point of view, he's not a very good attacking player. Uh, it's more his overall game, his defense, his speed, that is obviously mm. yeah, uh, world-class. Um, and I always, when I play against players, and Momota is kind of the same, that are not that strong in the attack, I'm I'm much better at actually creating this feeling of feeling comfortable on court, because I'm not that afraid of playing the back line. Um, so Makes sense. Yeah. It, that, I'm also trying to look at it in a positive way because obviously it would be better again for me as well, uh, or especially to play a softer opponent first because um, I, I I usually play better the further I go into a uh, into an event. Mm. Um, but yeah, I knew I had to have a seed to play in the first or the second round because I'm not seeded. Uh, and yeah, I'm not going to complain too much about Luxia. He's uh, for me personally not the worst. But no. Yeah. And he has had a, I mean, a tough schedule with the with For the sure. Commonwealth Games uh, sure. as well. So we have had like how much five six weeks uh, to to practice and and kind of like uh, regroup after mm. the eight five Asia tournaments. Um, yeah. And he is, I mean, he I he and and some of the other players has been in in England yeah. playing the Commonwealth. Yeah, I feel like he's been constantly uh, on the go on the move. Mm. Um, I think like where he does have a small advantage is that obviously he, uh, I'm sure he got a lot of confidence from winning that Commonwealth Games, uh, and he's also in this kind of match rhythm uh, mm. that we've been talking about. If we if we go just one week back, uh, I was actually quite frustrated in training because I didn't feel like my game was coming together at all. Uh, I felt great in my body. I felt fast and uh, like the physical part was was going uh, as it should but i just did not feel like when we play for points that i i had any clue of how to set up points or yeah do anything right mm. basically uh, but yeah for the past week uh, i've been playing a lot of matches uh, a lot of games and uh, sets and games with restrictions as well uh, and i'm i'm really beginning now to feel that it's uh, it's been coming uh, together much better it can both be a, an advantage but all definitely also a disadvantage uh, not to being in like match uh, mm. match form if mm. you can say yeah, that yeah. um i mean if you play for five weeks in a row there is definitely a possibility that you are going to be mentally and physically mm. drained by yeah. the end of it yeah. um and he has been playing a lot. Um, it's going to be interesting to to see. Mm. I uh, <laughs> I just when you talked about uh, mass practice and, and putting things together, um, mm. I I got to think about you 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 had one great story a few years ago I think, where just one of the last training sessions before we 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 went to, was it where was it you you played um, a guy I'm not going to mention the name but like a, it it was supposed to be like a a lighter opponent for you mm. so you could gain some confidence <laughs> and stuff and then you just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then oh. you just got your ass kicked yeah, that was so bad uh, <laughs> just before leaving uh, I think it was uh, world championships or something like I that I think it was before the world championships in uh, in 19 in Basel when you made the final okay uh, yeah I played one of the sparring players here in, in Bundu uh, <laughs> and yeah final match before we uh, we left and uh, I would say it was a player that usually I would always mm. beat pretty comfortably and I think E even when we tried to uh, make restrictions or anything like it <laughs> it was just a disaster uh, I, i've had a couple of those uh, in my first world championships in 2011 uh, in london uh I, yeah it was a big experience for me for the first time for me at a, at a huge championship uh, and in the final training session in london uh, in the main uh, arena I got to play a uh, set, full set with the uh, Gator, mm. who is obviously at the time was uh, still world class. Mm. He he won a bronze, uh, and I lost twenty one three, and I was like, "What is going on here? I'm I'm gonna be a joke in this these championships." And th it's actually the only time I made the quarterfinal of the world championship, so it it ended up going uh, pretty well. And I think I also learned from that that. You, you can't really know exactly where your game is mm. until you get on court and it's love all play and it really uh, really mm. matters you can have done all the hard work here but it, 
it's not until it's uh, it's game time that you actually know if uh, if the preparations have been yeah perfect or not. I think we have, we have talked about this before that it's it's definitely not certain that you are going to play at your absolute best level mm. just because you are in phenomenal shape mm. or you had no, like no. six or eight weeks of very good practice. Mm. There's so much more to it uh, to yeah. to performing. Mm. Uh, it's uh, it's interesting. Mm. Um, well, that that was a bit about us. We need to touch on on the draws. Uh, we have yeah. a lot of questions Ooh. about who do we think will will win the the different categories and stuff. Yeah, and I think in like in men's singles, obviously, I think I will win, and yeah. you think you will yeah, win. Sure. Uh, but I think at least for uh, for us, that is the uh, the most interesting discipline yeah. still. Definitely, but I ha- I have one topic before we yeah. go into to the to the draws and the yeah. favors and stuff. Yeah. Um, we're going to play in Tokyo, Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, last summer, the Olympics was being held in mm-hmm. in Tokyo, Japan, um, and it wasn't really a successful tournament for the Japanese players. True. We talked about maybe the pressure was a little bit too too heavy on them. Yeah. Um, so I just think that that's going to be interesting to see how they're going to cope with with the with the pressure that yeah. that could be added on them mm. since it's on their home soil yeah. um what do you think about that i doubt that the pressure will feel as intense this time because uh, obviously the olympics is at least in badminton terms much bigger than the world championships and i, I think also the general focus in japan has probably been much uh, yeah much more intense mm. uh, at the olympics uh it doesn't mean that there will be no pressure or no added pressure. I think there will be, uh, but I, I would think that they would handle it better uh, this time. Also, probably because they've learned something mm. from from uh, the past. Uh, yeah, yeah, from the past year, uh, they won one bronze right in mixed doubles at the Olympics, uh, and that that was it. Yeah, I, I think it would be extremely surprising and also very disappointing if they only get away from this one with the bronze. Um, but on the other hand, in the Olympics. They had high expectations for Momota in singles for a medal, uh, and I don't think anyone will have him as a favorite to win a medal uh, this time. Also, considering the draw, actually, I think he ended up in the uh, in the toughest uh, quarter of the draw uh, there is. Uh, who is who is he facing? Uh, he is facing. I don't remember the first round, but he has Pranoy in the second round. That's he right. has uh, Lino Munoz from Mexico in the first okay. one, which I think he will win. But then he has Pranoy in the second, and then. Uh, yeah, he's been he's been in, in he's in been in good great shape, shape recent, yeah. recently, and, so. and I think he's really like a giant killer. So mm-hmm. like he he's <laughs> always good when he plays the better uh, rank players. I think definitely. But yeah, he has Lakshya in the third round, or me, uh, and Lishija or Srikant uh, in the uh, quarterfinals. So yeah. I think that's a pretty uh, pretty tough draw. Now that we are digging digging uh, into the to the draw, um, speaking of 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 another giant killer. Um, mm. Lisi Ja is going to face uh, uh, Brice yeah. Le Verdes yeah. from from uh, from from France. Mm. Um, how old is he? Brice is my age, actually. He's born sure. in '86, so okay. he's uh, turning uh, 36. But he's I he's also known for being uh, a giant killer. Yeah. Uh, he actually yeah. be- defeated uh, Lisi Ja's uh, countryman, uh, the legend Li Chong Wei, in, in Glasgow. Glasgow. Yeah. First round, uh, 2017, um, yeah. and that was a huge surprise. Mm. I mean, he, he has not been a giant killer for a while, mm. uh, but he defeated Strickland. Uh, I can't remember the tournament, but recently. Yeah, I think it might have been in. Was it in Singapore? Actually, where I was. Could have, could have been yeah. in Singapore. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I just always feel like it's a tricky mm. uh, opponent, Breeze, in the yeah. first, in the first round. Yeah. Um, they actually, I think they played each other in. Uh, in the Olympics as well, they did. Uh, yeah, and I think Lishija yeah, absolutely smoked uh, okay, Breeze because yeah. I, I think I remember Breeze uh, putting up like a social media post about uh, that he had never played anyone where he felt <laughs> he had no chance whatsoever okay. to do anything. Uh, but yeah, we'll see if Lishija yeah, turns up in the same shape as well. Mm. And uh, yeah. he, he has been Lishija. Yeah, he has been prioritizing this World Championships. Uh, Quite, quite, quite a lot. I mean, since he withdrew, withdraw from the Commonwealth Games, to, yeah, to, was, to focus on this. I was very surprised about that. Uh, I actually thought he wouldn't be allowed to do that either. I thought it was part of the agreement with the Badminton Association of Malaysia that he had to participate in these events. But it's probably only the team events that he has to uh, okay. participate in, since he was allowed to, uh, yeah, to yeah. pull out. Uh, but yeah, I think it says a lot about how how much 
importance he puts on on these world championships because yeah. even though i i feel like the commonwealth games it goes for anyone who's not involved in it it goes under the radar because it, it's like it's such a weird event if you if you don't really uh, understand the history and and everything but i feel like for the ones that are actually in it it's a huge deal um, it means a lot yeah yeah so I don't understand it personally yeah, because no. I've never played it, so it's yeah. it's, uh, it's 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 difficult for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and some interesting results in that one as well. And one from the men's singles, the, the guy from uh, also Malaysia. It uh, doesn't have to be like a Malaysia podcast, but uh, Ng Se uh, Young is his name, right? Um, Ng Se Young. Yeah, almost the same. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to pronounce uh, the difference in there, but I'm sure you guys know who it is. He made the final there. He beat uh, Srikant also in the uh, in the team event final. Uh, helped Malaysia win gold, and uh, yeah, I think he lost 16 in the third against Lakshya in the mm. final. Yeah. Uh, so he's also going to be an interesting guy. He's in the top uh, quarter of the draw, playing uh, Vadoyo first round and then Suniyama uh, second round. And the thing about Malaysia is that. If I'm not mistaken, they have never won a gold medal at a World Championships or, or Olympics. Olympics. Yeah, it's and, crazy. And is that across all sports? Uh, I don't know. I, I just know well, in badminton. Uh, okay. I, uh, I don't know about the other sports. I remember at the Olympics, was it in 16? Yeah. They had three finals yeah. in, men, in men's singles, mixed doubles, and uh, men's, men's, doubles. men's doubles. And the men's doubles had two or three match points two match points two match points yeah. in in the deciding game yeah i think wow. they made a service mistake in the first one and twice uh, i'm actually is quite it two service mistakes i think they did yeah okay wow. yeah it's crazy it's that's crazy that's insane uh, i remember at one of the olympics they had a diver actually i'm pretty i'm not sure if they won a gold or, or not uh, okay i don't know but yeah anyway, but at least in badminton, badminton, in badminton, badminton it's, it's and that is sure the sport true. sport that we are co- covering uh, i don't think that the, this guy mm, let's see young <laughs> he will win the gold but ng he, can, can we just NG, call him let's NG. call him that uh he has victor in the third round as well so okay. i will be very surprised to see him win a medal uh, but he's uh, definitely a guy that we need to uh, look out for and in that top half uh, i think another one that's really interesting is shiyuki he's also up there not seated or anything so um yeah he has a uh, gemke in the second round uh, so that w- that's going to be very interesting we haven't seen him for uh, yeah since thomas cup in denmark it's uh, been a year almost yeah, yeah. It's been a year. So I thought that he had a um, some kind of tr- troubles with the federation. He wasn't allowed to play, and mm. suddenly we we did not see him for a year after some pretty strange behavior. Um, <laughs> yeah. But he's back. He's back. Yeah, I have his, a few uh, questions about about the yeah, whole Shiuki case. Yeah, we can take that now. We mentioned it briefly on one of the other podcasts uh, that it was quite weird that how he was actually entered into the draw because uh, he was declined in phase one. So this these phases were bwf invite players to uh to the world championships and then the first phase he was invited because of his ranking um which is obviously still high because the rankings are frozen he was declined and then in phase two all of a sudden he was accepted instead of chen long who had to pull out and in the rules it says that if you decline in an earlier phase you cannot be re-entered and that's very clear mm. um, but i've actually been looking into that matter a lot because uh, i thought it was very weird and it uh it uh, it sounded a bit fishy, actually, I would say. Uh, but there is a, I don't know if you can call it decent explanation, but at least there is an explanation that he should never have been eligible in the first place. Because he had that ban from the National Federation, he should not have been invited in phase one. And that is actually in the rules. So if you have a ban from your national government, or your national association, you are not allowed to even be invited in phase one. So that's a mistake from BWF side that they invited him in the first place. Okay. So when Chen Long pulled out in phase two, then his place should go to another Chinese player if there's anyone eligible. And because he did not have a ban at that time, his ban had been uh, revoked. Uh, he should be able to accept that one because he should never have been able okay. to decline the first one. I hope that made sense. Yeah, uh, I, thi- but I think it did. It did. Yeah. So that that is why he's uh, he's in uh, <coughs> okay. in the draw. Uh, so it's. Yeah. So it's actually. I, I think it is within the rules uh, okay, what it, they have done, uh, and it's been. Uh, yeah, we've looked into it quite a lot. I even got the Danish uh, Association also to try and uh, ask some questions about it, and also the Athletes Commission. Okay. Uh, and even Paul Ekhor, our president, uh, he's uh, been one of the guys who's. Uh, yeah, who's been uh, confirming that it's it's uh, the right way to cool. uh, to do it. Okay. 
Yeah. Thanks for. What was the word? Clarifying. Yeah. Is that the word? That is a that is a word. <laughs> it is a word. I'm not sure <laughs> if it's the right word, but yeah. uh, anyways, what about Kevin Cordon from Ooh. Guatemala? Yeah. I haven't seen him since the. No, you might see him actually on court in the quarterfinal. I do. You can, you can, yeah. He's playing Niluka from Sri Lanka in the first round. Okay. And then uh, Lo, the defending world champion. I'm not a... Uh, I'm taking one match at the yeah, time. Yeah, but you're so. in that quarter. <laughs> okay. I can say that much. Cool. I can say that much. <clears> I think... Uh, he had a, a, a crazy run at the Olympics, and I haven't seen him since. No, he actually he played Malaysia Open and Malaysia Masters, uh, but uh, he didn't do so well. I remember he lost to Wang Suwei from uh, Chinese Taipei in one of them. Okay. I uh, don't remember the other one, but yeah, we'll see if he can make a, like a huge run uh, once again. He's a specialist in these uh, big events. He had a quarterfinal in uh, 2011 as well. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, it's um, it's it's going to be very very interesting. There are so many good players. I mean, all the players uh, are back. No no injuries. Uh, yeah, I it's mean, only Chen Long who's missing. Chen Long, yeah. we don't know the yeah. situation with him. Is he yeah. retired or not? Yeah, yeah. Um, but other than him, everyone is in the draw. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a, a very very interesting World Championships. And I think it's actually a pretty like balanced draw. Uh, I think that the, again the bottom quarter is a, maybe a bit stronger than the others. But I think in general, uh, there's no quarter where you can say that this guy is for sure gonna win a medal or like this guy has an easy draw or anything. Uh, obviously, Victor is it's a huge favorite uh, mm. considering how he's done uh, yeah. or performed this year. But yeah, even even in his draw like, like he will have to play either Ginting or maybe even yeah, Shiyuki uh, so it's it's not like it's a given that he will just uh, yeah win a medal <coughs> so Victor and Ginting is is facing each other in the quarterfinal once again right Ginting and Victor, Victor yeah. yeah 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 at least they are seated that way is that like the, the fourth time in yeah. a row or something yeah yeah that must be pretty annoying for Ginting <coughs> yeah that's how it is that's how it is have, have we have we talked about the um, the draw system here on the podcast I don't think we have it's something I that I have addressed on my yeah. personal account yeah, uh, yeah. in the past yeah. um, I feel like it's definitely not random yeah. I feel like there is something wrong with 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 the drawing system and uh, because the same players end up playing each other too often exactly yeah. and it's yeah. unrealistic um, I, I've heard that for 15 years now, and yeah. I yeah, I tend to agree, but I also I think it's pretty difficult to <laughs> figure out what to do about it or how to really prove light it. Draws? Yeah, light draws, just to totally totally random. Yeah. Stream it on BWF uh, yeah. platforms and yeah. stuff. They do that for the for the world uh, tour finals. Yeah, they but do. that's also a much smaller draw. There's only eight players a pair <laughs> in each uh, discipline. If, so it take, would if, you it, if, if it takes three hours, then let it take three hours. I mean, so you would do that for every world tour event. We can start with super thousands and okay. super seven fifty. Yeah, well, I'm I'm all for it. I That's mean, fine. it's a good. It's you could produce a good show yeah. and and. Uh, I actually tuned in. They did a live draw for these world championships. Okay. Did, did you know that? No, no. I didn't. I, I tuned in to watch it, <laughs> and it turned out it was just uh, like a production where they uh, plotted in the names in the system. And then they pushed a button <laughs> to make the draw, so like the entire draw <laughs> came out, and, and, and I was like, "Is that it?" <laughs> Spend it so, in, a, in yeah. a nutshell. And then they were just scrolling down, and then said, "Yeah, so that's a draw in men's single." So you you had to like see where your name was in like three seconds, and if you missed it, you you okay. wouldn't know. And then the the draw wasn't uh, available online until a few hours later because a referee had to. Uh, uh, had to uh, confirm that it was done in the right way and okay. everything. So yeah, that was. Uh, that I think it would be a good way to to start uh, build some hype about the events um, yeah. to to do a live draw. Yeah, for, um, sure, for sure. Have people like us sitting there discussing mm. interesting yeah. uh, matchups and stuff. Mm. But uh, yeah, that's um, that's a men's single straw. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So we just. Uh, wrap up by uh, mentioning the the favorites obviously yeah, Victor yeah, yeah I would say Lisi Jia I would have him as uh, Lokin Yu Lokin Yu is uh, is interesting if mm. he can uh, defend his title yeah he he, yeah. he haven't been doing that well uh, since he won uh, the world championship yeah he's uh, been struggling a bit and he also struggled at the commonwealth games <coughs> uh, so I think he's not going into the event as like one of my favorites oh. he's more like a like a dark horse I have Victor really as a high number one and mm -hmm. then Lisi Jia like you uh, and I think for me also Laksha even though I said yeah, that yeah. I feel okay with yeah. him it's only because of playing style I think 
he deserves to be uh, to be mentioned. Um, but a guy like Srikant, even though he, like his results are always a bit up and down, I would never rule him out because I feel like he's a guy who, if he goes on a run where he builds up confidence, mm. he, he can basically beat uh, anyone on the day. Placed second uh, last year. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you uh, where do you see me in the? Uh, I mean, talking about favorites and stuff. Am I totally out of the picture? No, I think in, in like in general, or I would say that I think your draw is actually decent <laughs> uh, in terms of making it far into the event. Yeah. Um, but obviously, when you have been injured for so long, we haven't seen you play for so long. It could yeah. be an advantage, no expectations yeah. at all and stuff. I, I think in general, I'm always like uh, thinking too highly of you. You Cause definitely. Yeah, definitely. I, I always feel like you're one of the candidates to uh, to win, and I always <laughs> try to vouch for you. And uh, like you when expect, people you say expect so much. From yeah, me I do. I, when I, people I mean, say bad stuff about you, I'm, I'm trying to defend you. So <laughs> like you, you really need to perform this time to oh. kind of. Uh, not put me in a bad light. I'll uh, do my best. I'll but I think this best. time my expectations are actually uh, quite a bit lower than it has okay. been for uh, yeah. for some time. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I, was, I was thinking about um, the thumbnail prior to this episode. <coughs> I mean, the, we should like uh, plug in the favorite, the faces of the f- uh, of the favorites, favorites and yeah, then you yeah. and I on the sides like yeah. we usually do. Uh, and I was like, I shouldn't be out on the side. <laughs> I should be among the favorites. Uh, what's going yeah, on here? Yeah. But uh, anyways, I'm just happy enough, to. Be, I'm enough. just happy to be on the same thumbnail. Yeah. As all those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's men's single. Yeah. Let's move on to women's singles. We are not going to go through no, no, all, all no, five categories. No. We do not have time for that. We don't. Uh, no. Let's just do the women's singles and the men's doubles, perhaps. And cool. First yeah. of all, the the recent winner of uh, Commonwealth Games, P. V. Sindhu. She pulled out. She pulled out. Yeah, yeah. That was actually a quite a crazy story. Uh, when she played Gu Jin Wei uh, from Malaysia in the Commonwealth Games, uh, she uh, she said that she had a lot of pain. Uh, it, I think it had already started a couple of matches before. Obviously, they first played the team event and then the individual event, and uh, I think she beat Gu Jin Wei in the in the final of Commonwealth Games, um, and she had a lot of pain in uh, in her foot and. Uh, she said that she almost couldn't walk at the uh, the end of uh, of the match. Uh, so when she got back, she got a scan, and she actually has a stress fracture in her foot. Okay. Uh, so she had been playing with that and and winning with that. Um, so yeah, she needs uh, she needs some weeks rest now um, mm. to to get that back. And I actually saw that her coach is uh, Park from Korea. He uh, went back to Korea on uh, on some holiday time now. Okay. Because, yeah, I think it's gonna take at least some weeks before she's is uh, back Park, into Park, is, is, uh, is he her uh, personal coach? Yeah, I think so, but he's also coaching some of the other Indians every now and then, so I'm actually not entirely sure okay. uh, how how his position is. Uh, but I think like one thing that's really annoying about the, uh, yeah, about the fact that she's out, uh, apart from obviously not going to see her play, is that it, it messes up the draw a little bit. And we've said that before. We also complained about it last time uh, at the World Championships, that it doesn't make sense we put out the draws so early because it can make the draws very unbalanced. Mm. So far, we've been pretty lucky, actually, that there are very few uh, withdrawals, uh, but it can really mess up a, uh, a draw pretty bad. And I think I said it was a well-balanced draw in men's singles. I think it's even more well-balanced in uh, in women's singles. There's not one quarter. I feel like it's much stronger than the other. But now, actually, your favorite, Ahn Se Young <laughs> from Korea, she uh, she has a uh, a pretty decent way uh, yes. to the uh, semifinals, um, at least in 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 my view. What do you? I think. What about Carolina Marin? It's been. I mean, she was yeah. she wasn't doing that well in Asia um, this summer. Um, it'll be interesting to see if she can find her old uh, level. Yeah, she used to be like uh, insanely good in these championships, mm. both the Olympics and World Championships. Yeah. How she many? How many has she won? Yeah, well, she she won the Olympics in sixteen, right? And uh, she won the World Championships three times, I think. She won it the first time in uh, Copenhagen. She won it in Indonesia, and I think she won one more. Um, I'm not sure in China or in Basel, perhaps. I'm not sure. I think I, don't know. No. I think she has not, a, in, not in Basel. Not I in think Basel, that yeah. was uh, Sindhu. Yeah, that's true. She won that's in Basel. True. Then it was probably in 18 or 17. Anyway, I'm yeah. pretty sure she has uh, three, and she's a big game player for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, she's in the upper half of the draw. The first really tough one she has is uh, Hipping Jiao from China. 
um, it's gonna be interesting. I saw uh, I follow her on social media, and she's been uh, in Sierra Nevada uh, on like a training camp in the heights, so in the mountains, okay. uh, along with uh, her coach Fernando Rivas, but also the entire French team. Actually, they moved their training camp there, so they've been training in the heights for uh, I don't know if it's two or three weeks, but for for quite some time. Um, so this, it at least from the looks of it, it looks like she's been <laughs> working really hard again to get back into uh, the right form. Because I, I completely agree with you that she was not impressive in uh, when we saw her come back actually from her her knee injury. And I was also expecting to see her play a bit more uh, because she's had this protected ranking. And when you start playing again with protected ranking, you only have six months to mm. uh, to play uh, in yeah. a lot of points. Um, but it seems like she uh, she has just tried to prioritize these world championships. Um, yeah. Who will win? Give us your prediction. Um, well I'm going with uh, I'm going with either uh, Tai Chu Ying or Ante Young. Yeah, well, that would be great. I really hope that Tai Chu Ying will finally get one of those. Uh, well, she's uh, never won ones. a world championship. Yeah, or the Olympics. Uh, but I'm actually gonna go with Chen Yufei. Chen Yufei. Uh, yeah, who won the Olympics as well. Um, I think she's uh, she's sometimes also a bit. Uh, like I, I I don't know if underestimated is the right word. More like undervalued, actually. I think she's a uh, she's she's probably the most clever of the top uh, women singles players. Uh, and I think, given that she won the Olympics and the experience she has, and also with the results this year, I, I think she's a good uh, she's a good bet. And I think also her draw is uh, is pretty decent. But my hope is Tai She's Why? my favorite. She is. Yeah, she is. Because she of plays her technique. Yeah, and, uh, she plays nothing like me at all. But I just, I love watching her play. I love it every single when time. When I got my new haircut, a lot of people commented yeah. on my photo yeah, that I was uh, the male version of of Tai Chi Ying. Yeah. So, but I don't. Think I'm fine with that. It's I, okay. I don't think your game is nearly as beautiful as hers. Don't you think so? No, fair enough. I really don't. Damn. Like it's not that I don't enjoy watching you play, <laughs> but <laughs> you're oh, too much. She is skillful. But yeah, she's my. Uh, she's my. Uh, personal favorite we had a question about uh should we go to men's double yeah we can we yeah can. we had a quick question about uh, the the minions yeah kevin sugamulio and our friend marcus gideon our friend since he has been here on the podcast and um, a friend of the house will they rise to the occasion <laughs> yeah get back to their winning ways mm. do you I think they know. will i don't know i mean the Alfian and Arianto mm. has been playing very well. They did they they did well in in Asia and they're in um, the same quarter as them actually. Wow! So they will play each other in the quarterfinal if everything goes according to plan, of course. Mm, that uh, sucks for Indonesia. Yeah, obviously uh, they they still have uh, Asan and Sergio on. Yeah, they have a much better draw. I think it's actually the most unbalanced of uh, three draws that okay. we are going to talk about. I think that quarter is uh, yeah. It's, you are it's really into strong. like balance in the draws. Yeah, today. but I think <laughs> it's it's because uh, usually I think they are very unbalanced, yeah. <laughs> but not this time. Uh, but yeah, San and Setu, and they have uh, Lams Fusen. Can we like have a count every time he's uh, talking about? We could Bell make it like a, like a ding, uh, maybe we shouldn't ding, promote drinking, ding. but we could make a drinking game out of it, <laughs> <laughs> and people would be like extremely wasted at the end of this episode. Uh, but no, San and Setu, and they have Lams Fusen Seidel, and then uh, uh, the Danish daddies Kim and Anas. It's only one of them who's <laughs> bad, but uh, or Ong and Teo from Malaysia. So I think that's a pretty good draw, actually, for Asan and Setuan. Uh, I just met Kim in, in the locker room. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was sitting in he was sitting in a uh, t- trash trash can. Yeah. Like one of the big green ones. Yeah. yeah. In in a cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to recover. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's fresh and ready. So yeah. uh, yeah, ready they also have a medal to defend, actually, from, uh, yeah, from the have. last one. They have. And I think they will be quite happy with their role as well. I think that quarter is. Uh, is they are always lucky. Yeah. Always true. Kim and Anna. It's, it's it's insane. They've built the entire career on luck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> must be nice. Yeah. Um. But yeah, obviously, apart from uh, the two Indonesian pairs, I think Hoki and Kobayashi is also still defending uh, champions. Yeah. And one of the pairs to um, to look out for. They will play uh, Fikri and Maulana in the uh, third round, actually. So that's a tough one. It is a tough one, but they've also been struggling a little bit ever since winning that All England, uh, the Indonesians, to really produce yep. the same kind of results. Uh, but then quarterfinal against Renki Reddy and Shetty, um, which I think is also one of the really dangerous pairs. Also won the Commonwealth Games in a uh, convincing style. So what about um, Lee and uh, Wang from from Taipei? 
Chinese Taipei. They are playing Choi and Seo. Okay. Third round, which I think can be a tough one. Yeah. Because uh, they're also another one of the pairs who has been really struggling to kind of produce the same kind of form they uh, they showed at the Olympics. They won the Olympics, right? Yeah. So is there is there any pairs missing in the men's doubles draw, or is it also going to be? I, I think it's uh, it's everyone. I think everyone is there. Nice. And I, cool. I, I think for for me, uh, I would actually uh, I would say Alfian and Arianto are are my favorites uh, to win. Interesting. Yeah, a little bit surprising, uh, but I need to pick a pick a pair as well. Mm. I'll go with the with the Japanese p- uh, pair. Hoki and Kobayashi. Hoki and Kobayashi. I think they will defend their title yeah. on on home, home soil. soil. I think uh, I think so. It's not a bad bet. It's not a bad bet. Do you have anything else to add to the World Championships? Obviously, that is the the big uh, topic today. Um, I think, I we think have, I'm we've uh, been, uh, been around quite I'm a lot. I'm all good. Yeah. I'm all good. Cool. Should we'll we jump uh, to some listeners' questions? Yeah, because we got a lot of them. Once again, guys, um, thank you so much for all the great questions that we have received on Instagram. Yeah. Since posting uh, a story. Mm. Um, I, I want to go with the first one. Okay. Because I had a, like the best question ever. Go ahead. It's from our friend from uh, from the training, <coughs> Mas Christoffersen. We mentioned him before. He asked who won the final game we played against each other in training. You before, and I? Yeah. Before leaving for uh, Japan. Who won that one? I do not recall that. <laughs> we played yesterday and obviously I won. Nah. And it wasn't even close. Uh, it was close. I was close. 21-19. Yeah, I still won. Yeah, 21-19. I, yeah. I was playing with restrictions to, to kind yeah, of Yeah, like I just wanted to get it out there. I won. <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, move on. Fair enough. Yeah, I had a good experience today, though. I, okay. I, I ended on, on a high note. Yeah, okay. I actually I won a set today. It was a. Uh, but was I think you should also take it as a good thing that you can actually get 19 points against yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it really boosted yeah. my confidence. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, was that all, or do you have some some? No, other I, that's all I have. No, it looks like you have one there, but I have we a couple of uh, ones written down. We have a we have a few questions about the the PBL uh, Premier mm-hmm. Badminton League, which is the uh, the the Indian. Indian League, yep. um, which is a an interesting thing. Um, it's back with a new season. It's back with a new season. It's um, it will be played from mid December to mid January, something like that. Yep. Um, usually, I mean, at, at one of the only leagues where the some of the best players in the world mm. is actually participating. Um, it's a it's quite a fun event. I've played it once. Mm. I think it was in two thousand eighteen. Um, with this auction, all the players is is are on auction, uh, and uh, it's just it's just a good event. It's just a very good show. Um, mm. It's different. We we played at that time. We played five sets to to eleven. Yeah. So um, are you gonna play again this time? Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, it was definitely fun. Uh, mm. So I will consider it. Um, obviously, it also depends on. I mean, the money. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the money is usually good in PPL. Is what I hear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you? you have, I have, have never played. Never played it. Played it uh, no. I've been close a couple of times, yeah. but yeah, I never really uh, yeah. materialized that one. No. I would say it's it's. I mean, it is a lot to play four weeks. Mm. Uh, we have a tough uh, tournament schedule mm. already as it is, so to play a league for four weeks can yeah. be a lot. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely fun, uh, and it was really really a good show, um, and it was. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed it last time. Mm. Um, there is a matches twice a day mm. running on television yeah. so if you had a day off you could just turn on the yeah. television and there were team matches going on all day and it was like the players were getting s- i mean so like hyped about the matches and they were really uh, putting a lot of effort in which i was quite surprised to see mm. i thought i mean to be honest i thought that a lot of players was was just there to do a job mm. and, and then leave but they were actually quite good at Ma- making it like a like a show mm. uh, and the players were getting invested and uh, yeah. wanted to to do their best and try to win mm. um it was a it was a fun experience i'll definitely consider it um yeah cool that's yeah. one that's I'm, one I'm not questions. gonna play this uh, this time either it doesn't really uh fit well with the rest of my schedule you are um, a family man you i'm a family man and my mom invited the entire family on a holiday uh during that same period and yeah. invite them to to hyderabad yeah, that's a possibility. Spent the no, the no. and Christmas actually, no, and like new a paid holiday is the best kind of holiday. Yeah, right, Christmas so. and New Year's Eve in in India. Yeah, 
I've actually done that before. I spent Christmas there before. Okay. Yeah, playing the Sayet Modi. Uh, so like the, the second biggest of the Indian tournaments yeah. it used to be played in December over Christmas time mm. so I was there with uh, our good friend Joachim Persson mm. and celebrated Christmas Eve with uh, two German double players uh, <laughs> okay. Johannes Schüttler and Ingo nice. Kinderfasser yeah, so that was uh, an interesting experience me and Oliver at the time I was in India uh, in 2018 we celebrated Christ- Christmas Eve with uh, with our team uh, mm. Mumbai Rockets Yeah, yeah. and it was a uh, a great group of people. Leon Day yeah. was there, yeah. uh, and his part and his uh, men's doubles partner Kim Jung. Yeah. And uh, who else did we have on the team? Samir Verma. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It was a it was a great time. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the Christmas that you actually remember. Yeah. So it's not yeah, like the rest. Yeah. I, I, I did. I did. Yeah. It, it definitely wasn't Christmas food that we ate. It no, was no, uh, no. Some yeah. kind of Asian Asian yeah. style. Yeah. Oliver drank drank a few beers together with uh, with the uh, with the Koreans. It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. it was a fun time. But um, and we we should also get some some Indian players on the podcast. We we yeah. are working on that, right? Yeah, we have one in the pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, and hopefully more than one. But we have yeah. one that we actually already agreed with. Uh, okay, so cool. it will hopefully be uh, one of the next episodes. There is also can, uh, one guest that is highly recommended. Um, and I just, w- <laughs> I mean, we can't say who it is, but we have tried, guys. We have really yeah. tried our best, um, to get this person on the podcast, and maybe it will happen in the future. I just we will keep trying. Every time we, we have a guest on, there are so many comments uh, yeah, and so yeah. many DMs saying you should get this person or this yeah, person yeah, or yeah. this person. And for the most part, we actually tried, yeah, um, yeah. but uh, it, it's I mean it's it's not that easy. It's not that easy. So uh, we'll do our best, guys, uh, and to to bring that. on some some great players and people here on on the podcast. Yeah. Next question. Yeah, you. we had an interesting one, or at least I found it interesting. Uh, one someone asking if we had to train somewhere other than Denmark, where would we uh, choose to train? Uh, and when I read it, I I, uh, I immediately thought of Malaysia because I've already been to Malaysia training with uh, Miss Bun Sidek, uh, who used to be the coach for for Lee Chung Wei, and. Uh, I was there for a full week, uh, staying at his house. Actually, he has a, a badminton hall in the, the in the backyard. He <laughs> built nice. uh, three courts, and uh, you can sleep there as well. Uh, so yeah, his uh, wife cooked me uh, uh, three meals Nasi a day. And, yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, I just I enjoyed it so much, and I, I thought he was a fantastic coach, and I loved the way he uh, he did things. He was so um, like. Uh, Actually, he w- he was very intense, uh, and he he was so hard working. He was working at the national center at the same time. So he went there in the morning, early morning. I think he started there at six or something like that. And then when he was done, he went straight back home to do two hour coaching session with me, back to the national center coaching them again, and then back coaching me wow. again. And uh, I didn't pay him anything. Uh, he just uh, invited me because. He had a uh, assistant coach called Salim, who I knew well. So he just invited me as a uh, as a guest, uh, and I, yeah, I enjoyed it so much, and I would really love to have that experience again. So it, it would be that would be the choice for me. I also love being in Malaysia. Mm, yeah, it's it's it's, it's a great country, and mm. I was a little bit surprised about uh, the. I, I was there one week before I went home to Denmark, but mm. the passion from mm. from the people. Yeah. I mean, whether it being the the taxi driver or the the guy in the reception at the hotel i mean they were so passionate about mm. the tournaments coming up uh, yeah. want, want, wanting photos and autographs yeah. and stuff it was yeah. it was nice yeah. that's uh that's i i, I could choose that one, that one mm. as well mm. <coughs> i think one of the advantages also in terms of choosing malaysia is that i think the style they do is not that far away from the style we do here compared to if you look at for example china i think they do even more of this where it's like half an hour where you do the same exercise and like I, I feel like Malaysia in terms of culture and everything is a bit more like Denmark and that's at least what, what mm. I prefer personally um, it will of course be interesting to try and train the same way as the Chinese or uh, the Chinese Taipei team or whatever but it's just I really don't feel like it's me at <laughs> all doing that kind of I have uh, no training. idea how they train yeah. so but it, w- it would it would be fun to, to, to try different things Mm. different ways of uh, of doing things yeah. um indeed yeah could also be fun to i mean go to the united states or yeah, go yeah. to uh, south america uh, i mean yeah. see how things are yeah, working there. something yeah. s- somewhere like quite random when yeah. it comes to badminton yeah, yeah. but uh yeah good question Hans Christian. yeah another like, one that's uh i will i will direct that one 
to you because uh, I have uh, I've already actually shared my opinion on it uh, on Twitter. Um, there's been a suggestion from uh, from Stein actually, who we had on the podcast mm-hmm. last time about uh, instead of changing sides at the end of each game, we should do it at eleven. So every time we reach eleven, we should change sides, and that's simply to try and uh, and make sure that you play. In, in each game you play both on the good side and the bad side so we don't see so many three game matches where it's only three game matches because it's almost impossible to play on the bad side of the mm. court where there's a lot of drift and if you play half a game on the good side half on the bad side then the better player will more often win in straight games um, anyway uh, and I, I think it's a very good suggestion actually and I think it makes no real difference to how the matches are right now in terms of uh, how long it would take and stuff because you you don't add any extra breaks really uh, you just uh, make the two minute interval at 11 instead of uh, at the end of games I actually think it's a great idea yeah. um, but what you should do then is I mean you, you should make sure that you have the first set where you start on one side mm. and then in the next set you'll need to start on the other side but you also do that because you only change ends at 11 so you change at 11 and then you play okay yeah cool yeah yeah the, i understand yeah the last half of the first game there and the first half of the yeah. second game uh, there so i think it's a great idea yeah me too me too so that's our uh, opinion on it that it's a great you see, idea. you see quite a lot of sets where it's already over at like five zero in, in 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 a set because yeah it's so difficult for for the one playing on the the on difficult the side. side yeah yeah um, i think you would uh, avoid that pretty often yeah. uh, if you did it this way so uh, i just hate when people drop a set <laughs> <laughs> you would never do that you no, would never I've do that never done that so before. yeah i'm uh, i'm considering actually uh, putting it in as a uh, suggestion to uh, the next agm of ewf and also trying to get the federation the danish federation to uh, put it forward that suggestion interesting yeah do you have a do you have a last one or um, I'm actually uh, out of the good ones because the other ones I had uh, written down was about Shio Ki and our uh, parking ticket. I think we uh, already addressed those two. There, there, there's a bunch of good ones. I mean, I have one that we could we could do here in mm-hmm. in the end, but it's not. It's just like okay, I'll I'll just read it to you anyway. Mm-hmm. Is game reading more important than speed? Oof. Oof. That's a that's oh that's a difficult one. Uh, when you say that, the first uh, person I think of is Janu Jørgensen actually, because he had a uh, <laughs> he had a coach who used to say that it didn't matter uh, if you did the correct footwork. You didn't need to practice footwork at all. You just needed to be able to read the game, which is in like in theory, I think he's right because mm-hmm. if you can read the game all the time then you it doesn't matter how you move you can just uh, go where you know but you can't right you can't do that so i think in in uh, like in reality it doesn't really work that way Uh, i would say that as a world-class player you cannot compete without speed Uh, and i think you can compete without being very good at game reading Uh, obviously you need it to some extent but in in my opinion i would say that speed is a little bit uh, more important because it is a necessity if you want to be world class mm. i think a player like Lindan in his later years he was really relying on being extremely good at reading the game yeah he wasn't moving as well um as when he was uh, younger mm. where he was extremely fast yeah but he was just reading the game so well it looked so easy for him to get around the court yeah. and uh it yeah. always looked like he was walking. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and that's a player who's really good at reading the game. He yeah. just knows where, yeah. where he's going to, I mean, put his uh, attention, which yeah. corners and stuff. Yeah. But so I think if you want to be one of the like very very best top two or three in the world, I think you need to have both. Uh, but you can easily sounds wrong, but you could easily be a uh, top 20, 30 player in the world if you only have speed and you you're not very good at reading. Uh, reading the game i think we have lots of examples of that actually i agree and uh, with that being said we have been on for one hour right now all right and then um let's stop. i need to to get home and start to to, to pack my stuff get Me ready too. for for takeoff tomorrow yeah i'm very excited uh, i'm glad that we got this done and um, it was a pleasure yeah as always and guys thank you so much for for watching this episode of the bampton experience if you haven't done it, please subscribe to the channel. It uh, really means a lot. Um, as Follow you us on Instagram. 
Yeah, and we are about to reach 5,000 on Instagram as well. Yes. It's awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, hope hope that you will watch the World Championships from wherever you are in the world and uh, be active on, on the social media platforms, commenting basically here on, on our channels, uh, the Bampton Experience. And uh, I guess that's it. That's it. Bye, guys. Oh, I have one last thing. Ah! Not bye yet. I... The the I have so <laughs> many messages on my personal Instagram about uh, why I'm not uploading on YouTube that much anymore. <sighs> and I just want to tease a little bit because I actually have a video coming out in a few days on my on my uh, YouTube about this whole summer, about my injury rehab and stuff. So um, there I'm is. I'm gonna watch it. Are you? Ah, yeah. Seriously. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Thank you. Yeah. There is something coming for you guys, so stay tuned for that as well. And with that being said, bye bye guys. Bye.